Welcome. Welcome, uh, dear viewers and dear listeners. And uh, today we are going to have a very special study. The Lord has impressed in our thoughts that we may present uh, to the world and those who are interested in the end time preparation and uh, all that it takes for the for the perfection of the Christian character. I would like us to pray and then we go into the study for today. Let's pray. Our most great. Opportunity to come before you to learn and see the methods that you want us to practice in our farms to bring glory unto you. As we trace this path in the word of God, be with us and give us wisdom for this humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so this series of study is uh, termed or deemed Advent, Advent uh, Farming or Advent Farmer Series. It is where we are going to look into the word of God and see the agricultural principles that were there in the, uh, in the old times in the word of God and how they weigh much for us these days so that we can have success in our farming techniques. We are living in a world that is in a deep crisis and every day there are uh, needs to be met. Hearts are yearning for something that they long for, something that will remove all the evils and give them peace, life and health. This can only be found in the word of God. So in this series, part one is tilling and dressing. We are going to look through all the Bible and see what uh, this term means and how they are beneficial to us, how we need to practice them. And also we are going to look at the reason why the systems of today do not work. Where have we gone wrong or where has the world gone wrong? I'm going to share my screen here so that we all study or be able to look through and read through my screen. Yes, Advent Gardening Series and it is tilling and brazing. Now, if we, if we look at the beginnings of all things, we go back to the book of Genesis chapter one. So in Genesis chapter one, verses one says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So God created the heaven, the first, second heavens and the earth. And then, the Bible says in chapter three, in chapter one, verses three, that, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. So basically in Genesis chapter one, we are looking at the beginning of all things on uh, all the components of life forms or things that make life to be. Because if we look at that principle and draw it back to the, uh, draw it in to the agricultural system, then that is the only principle that can be applied to, uh, to bring success. So we are going to look at Genesis chapter one and see uh, the deep principles of life there that makes, that will make agriculture to be successful. Now in Genesis chapter one, verses three say, and God said, let there be light and there was light. So the first principle of life there is light. 
in verses 14 also says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So we have the, the, the light being created on the fourth day and uh, the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, um, so the sun rules the day, produce the sun light. That is one of the most principle of life that is needed in our agricultural system. And for the class of today, I'm just going to mention these principles and how the systems were then. And in our third presentation, we are, we'll be going deeply to see on the restorative principles and mechanism of agriculture. Uh, so verses number six of Genesis chapter one says, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of, uh, of the waters. So we see the firmament in day two, God creates the firmament, the atmosphere. And in the midst of the waters. So we see the water is there. We see the firmament is there where actually we get the, uh, uh, the, the different types of air, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and all other trace um, uh, elements. So as we look at this, uh, we see that God puts these elements of life first before bringing forth the living things that are going to depend on this system. So we have air and warmth as one of the most important basic principles of life. And Genesis chapter one, verses 11 says, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so. So we find the earth, the soil, as one of the life forms that God makes in the beginning. And we are also seeing the seeds, the herb yielding seed and fruit tree yielding uh, uh, fruit whose seed is in it. So when we'll be going to the class where we will be looking at the seeding as one of the principles of gardening, or agriculture, you will better understand what I'm speaking about. Allow me just to mention it for today. Verses 20 of Genesis chapter one says, God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fall that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So we see moving creatures and here basically we have the uh, we have the birds on the third on, on the on the uh, on the fifth day where God created the birds, the force of the air. And God in verse 24 said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. So you find God putting uh, developing these life forms or these creatures uh, in the same environment so that the interaction can bring a, 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 symbiotic, a, 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 a symbiotic or a relationship that is of beneficial to one another. That is why we are identifying them. So that when we go into our farming techniques, we are going now to understand it deeply why God was making all this. So uh, the earth brought forth the living creatures and every kind of those living creatures. Verses 26 says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the kettle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So man is being created on day six, 
and is uh, after creation of the animals. And then God gives, me, gives him authority over all the earth, over the soil, I may say so. So the wisdom and the skill and the knowledge that man has over the earth or over the soil will make him to bring forth fruit. And if the principles are not followed, then there will not be a success. And even the soil will not be able to respond as required. Now let's look at this. Well, let us bring all this together. We've begun from Genesis chapter one and we have mentioned various life forms. And you find that God placed them before he created uh, man and also uh, uh, before creating plants, he had to make light, he had to make water, he had to make atmosphere or oxygen or air. That is going to be very beneficial for the growth of the plants or crops. Now, the, the world is made in an ecosystem where uh, everything in it actually depend on one another. Every life form depends on another and no any other should be listed out. So you see, we have the rains, the waters that helps in the germination process. We have the light that helps the plants to grow and uh, practice or do photosynthesis. And then we have the pollinators, the birds and the butterflies and the ladybirds. We have the predators to remove uh, or to clear off any, any bad thing in the environment, in the soil. We have the, the trees with the rooting system. And this rooting system is actually dependent on all the first life forms that we mentioned, the light, the water, uh, the nutrients uh, from plants that have decomposed. And also we have the compost from the animals, animal kingdom, and also from the, uh, from the dead matter of the, of the trees, we get manure and also uh, an ambient condition where plants can regrow and reproduce. Now, if we look at the Genesis model of farming, then we will find that everything that God placed was to make sure that there is, uh, there is success in the farming uh, systems. So you see the plants, because in farming we always grow, plants depend on all those life forms for them to survive. And what we need to make sure is that all this ecosystem works together and they are restored in our gardens in order to make sure that uh, the system can work well and we can have product. Uh, our production can be very hard. There must be earthworms or uh, small animals in the soil that helps to break down the soil. And when they're broken down the soil, the root areas of the soil will be able to get oxygen from the atmosphere. And that oxygen will be able to uh, help minerals to interact and get into the root air system. Uh, due to aeration through the soil system, the ground, uh, the, 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 the small sand, or the, 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 the sand or the stones will be able to dissipate excess electrolytes or electrons or discharge the charges so that the tree can be able to grow in a stable environment. And then we find that the rich dirt from the trees and maybe from the compost, uh, or from any debris matter helps the soil to retain the warmth 
the soil was not meant to be uh, to be open. That is how God made it. If you want to understand this unique system of farming that is very sustainable and makes all the life forms to survive, we have to go to the forest. If you go to the forest, you will see that underneath the soil, underneath the forest, there is rich matter. And that rich matter, if you remove it, uh, you will see living organisms in that soil. It means that that soil is, is living. It has to be dressed well. And uh, we'll be tackling this dressing effect uh, in a larger measure. Now you see in the ecosystem, there must be water. The water supplies nutrients to the to the to the uh, to the root uh, root cups or root airs, and it also dissipates the electrolytes into the soil so that the the root can be able to grow uh, very well. Now you also see the trees, but here I've, I'm looking at three specific trees that are needed in our uh, ecosystem. That is the cypress, the fir, and the cedar. Very important. And you're going to see this into details uh, in our third class, uh, how this help us to maintain a good soil and also help us to protect our, our lands. Now, we need to understand this principle that perfect soil bring forth perfect plants. And what do I mean by perfect soil? The healthier your soil is, your soil needs a balanced diet, just as human beings need balanced uh, nutrients. Uh, and this balanced uh, diet in the soil is, can be termed balanced chemistry where we have the minerals, we have the, uh, uh, we have the, 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 the soil interacting together uh, with other living elements to make sure that this chemistry is maintained because the soil contain a lot of minerals and that is what forms man uh, skin or, or, or system. Uh, we get our nutrients from the soil. So we must know the macronutrients, we must know the micronutrients, we must know the life forms uh, like the microbiota. The soil needs good bacteria. So that symbiotic uh, relationship that I was uh, uh, shown us here where the soil is allowed, the environment is allowed to interact in its own uh, so that every, uh, every life form brings a benefit to another life form, makes the soil to be in a balanced chemistry. Now you will learn that deeply as we go on. Now strong soil biology, where the minerals, the nutrients, um, the, the, the microbiome is maintained well, that makes your soil to be perfect. That makes your soil to be strong enough to fight uh, the pests and also fungi and also viral diseases. That is the only trick in making sure that uh, you produce plants that are strong, that are able to supply you with the nutrients that the body needs. Now, so if this healthier soil, we just have a balanced chemistry, good chemical compounds, minerals, and microbiome, or the bacteria, uh, or even the lipids within the soil, makes it to produce healthier plants. And these healthier plants, when we feed on them, we have healthier people. If this is not followed, we are not able to, uh, to, to be strong. We are not able to produce, uh, to produce strong plants. And if we, are, if, if we don't have strong plants, we will not have healthier people. We will be continuing to regenerate, to degenerate and degenerate until we become weaklings. The reason why Adam and Eve 
uh, has stayed for that long was because of the vital force that they had because they were eating from healthier plants. The healthier plants were having all the 92 nutrients or uh, mineral elements that makes the plant to be strong and make the soil to be healthy. And this balance of the nutrients is only brought when the ecosystem is interacting together. We must bring back our butterflies. We must bring back our oxygenated air by the plants and the trees we plant around. We must bring down the soil cover that is brought about by the cover crops or the trees that are, uh, are, are grown around the farm. These are techniques that we need to learn. The soil needs to be dressed or covered and protected so that it can be able to produce for a long time. So perfect soil leads to perfect plants. Balance in chemistry or strong soil biology leads to healthier plants and healthier people. So these are the principles we are building on so that when we come to a point where we are planning our farms, we will know what to put in and what uh, to put in place in the right manner so that the plants of our foods can be, uh, can be produced in an healthy environment. Now, in this time we're living, we are calling for something called hygienic gardening principles. Hygienic gardening principles relies on the Genesis chapter one principles that I've just spoken about, allowing that interaction to be maintained fully and uh, effectively, bringing down everything that is healthy. And for us to do this, we must place ourselves in the right place to do farming. Uh, if you want to farm rightly, you must place yourself in the right place. God himself did this uh, in the beginning. Now, I want us to look at gardening before fall. In Genesis chapter 2, we are looking still into the principles of life in the beginning, how it was. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, there we find the positioning of our gardens of, or our farms. God placed it in the eastward. What do you know about the eastward side of, uh, of geography? It is where the sun rises from. So that the, 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 you, you, your garden, if it is placed on the eastern end of, uh, let's say, uh, you, you, you place your plants on the eastern side of your, of your garden, you will be able to have a lot of sunlight during the day because that was one of the first principles of the life forms that we identified in Genesis chapter one, verses 11 and chapter one, verses two, uh, chapter one, verses three, sorry. So positioning of your garden also will make you to be successful or not. How you are going to plant your trees, which kind of trees are you going to plant, uh, the, 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 the nature of the seeds you are going to use and the type of the irrigation or water system you're going to give to your farm will make it to be successful or not. Verses 9 says, and out of the ground meant the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And look at verses 11. And a river went out of Eden. By the way, Eden means pleasant land. So God made a pleasant land or a delightsome land for um, uh, for, for man so that they be able to produce, uh, to produce food in abundance. In that pleasant land, if you look at it in the whole Bible, just type pleasant land, you will find that it was a land that was supplied with lots of water and it was producing a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, a lot of grains that would supply the whole world. 
so interesting. So we see God puts a river that supplies water. So for you to develop a good gardening and a good garden, you must have water. And this water will help you to make sure that your plants are strong. Now, in this, uh, in, the, in the principle of warmth or water, you must look at the type of water you want to give unto your plants. It should be, uh, it should be uh, plain and soft water. Always the, the salty water will not produce a good plants. They will wither. And they will also cause something all, uh, uh, something that is going to make your uh, the, 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 the roots not to uh, not to absorb a lot of nutrients. So verse 11 says, the name of the first is creation that is in which compasses the old land of Havila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is bedellum and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidikel. That is, it goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So you find God first set all the principles of a good hygienic gardening uh, garden and then put man there to do what? To dress it and to keep it. These are the two things that we are going to discuss or mention uh, so that we can be able to understand really what they mean uh, in the beginning and what we have today. In what forms can we still do this, uh, this gardening operation? So understand that man was to dress and to keep the garden. Now, in the beginning, there was an underground drip irrigation system. The watering system was not like the raining, the rains we have today, but it was coming from the ground. Genesis chapter two says, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So you need to supply water for your garden in order to achieve good production. So after the fall, what was the state of the things? It changed a little bit. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, uh, Adam and Eve had sinned. And so God said, and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, cast is the ground for thy sake. I want to pause there a little bit, that today many people see it as a curse or, or something that is um, uh, that is not fulfilling or satisfying to work in the garden. I want to tell you that the ground was cast for your sake, for your restoration, for the perfection of your character, and for the uh, development and completeness of your life. So it says, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So we get that because of sin, thorns and thistles shall be produced. We have today weeds, obnoxious weeds that are threatening our gardens. But God put them there, allowed them to be so that we may be transforming character. But he also gave techniques in which we can remove them so that we have maximum production. So verse 19 says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt 
thou return. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Now after sin, man is sent out from the garden of Eden, from the pleasant land. What was the main reason? Because of sin. What did God, occupation did God give man then after removing him from the garden of Eden to go to till the ground where he had been taken from. Now, what does it mean to till? To till means to labor, to cultivate, to plow and prepare for seed and to dress crops. This word includes not only plowing, but harrowing and whatever is done to prepare ground for a crop and to keep it free from weeds. So we say uh, in the most general sense, to till may include every species of husbandry, and this may be in its sense in scripture. So any thing dealing with husbandry, be it uh, taking care, planting, um, uh, plowing, arrowing, farrowing, hedging, or doing all those uh, is included in tilling. Tillage in agriculture, is the preparation of soil for planting and the cultivation of soil after planting. So it involves both preparation of your soil as well as uh, what you will do after you have cultivated your soil. Tillage is the manipulation of the soil into a desired condition by mechanical means. Tools are employed to achieve some desired effects such as pulverization, cutting or movement. Soil is still to change its structure, to kill weeds, to manage crop residues, and soil structure modification is often necessary to facilitate the intake, storage, and transmission for seeds and roots. Elimination of weeds is important because they complete for water, nutrient, and light. Crop residues on the surface must be managed must be managed in order to provide conditions sustainable for seeding and cultivation uh, of a crop. Now, we are learning here about tillage, wherein we break the soil. Now, that is also a technique that we need to, uh, to dig in deeply to understand. Now, in the beginning, when God created the ecosystem, that symbiotic uh, interaction was made in that there was no breakage of the soil so that the soil could be loose oftenly. The cover crops or the, uh, the compost on top of the soil was acting as a protective mechanism or medium that was going to remove weeds or to, shun, or to make weeds not to grow easily or make them easy to be uprooted should they grow. And most of the, of the times in the beginning, the ground was not thin most uh, oftenly or plowed because if we plow oftenly our soil, the nutrients will be taken deep into the soil and also the micronutrients will be exposed on the air, on the surface, and then they will be destroyed. Once the nutrient, the humus has been, uh, has been buried down into the soil and your microbioma has been exposed on the air, they die and then that soil is going to be dead. So the right tillage or cultivation mechanism that we need to apply is to make sure that the, the farm is surrounded with the trees that are able to drop leaves that will decompose and, de and, and cover the soil or apply manure from, uh, from grass-fed kettles that are going to make sure that your soil is protected to maintain that soil microbioma and also to maintain the nutrients. Our soil need not to be, if you want to succeed with pests and diseases and maximum production, you need not to disturb your soil structure. How do you achieve it? You achieve it by making sure that you put compost 
dried organic, uh, dried decomposed matter on your soil to protect your roots, to protect your, your plants, and to maintain mineral, to maintain microbioma in your soil. That is the principle that was applied then. But today we do a lot of, uh, a lot of cultivation with the tractors. If you continually use tractors to, uh, to, to harrow your farm, uh, it is just by time that farm will be dead because all the micro nutrients will be buried deep and all the, uh, all the bacteria exposed. And so you cannot achieve much. You need to minimize tillage or cultivation as much as you should so that uh, you be able to maintain your soil structure and your soil biology is maintained or put intact. What is the meaning of dressing? To dress, it means to make straight or a straight line, to adjust to a right line. We have the primary sense in the military phase, dress your rank. Number two says to adjust, to put in good order as to dress the beds of garden, sometimes to till or cultivate as in Genesis chapter two, verses 15, or Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 39. Now, man was called to dress the soil. How do you dress the soil? We dress the soil by covering, by fertilizer or compost. Spread over your soil, or some of the activities are mulching, top dressing, composting, manure application, or bed raising and also uh, tenuring around or maybe making sure that your soil do not, are not washed away. Soil tenure system, wherein we use uh, the protective mechanism to make sure that the soil is not washed away. The mulching will help us with that because once the top soil has been washed, all your microorganism will be gone. And we want to make sure that there is minimum, minimum disturbance to the soil organisms so that they can retain nutrients and perfect aeration is achieved. So how do you achieve the dressing factors mentioned there? You have to know what kind of crops I need to grow that will provide me with the nutrients or compost, which soils, which, which plants make good compost or manure, which animal uh, manure is best for soil restoration and for soil uh, moisture retention. You need to know which kind of crops or plants help to break loose the hard pan or the hard soil and bring the nutrients to the surface. These are the principles we'll be learning deeply in our third class. So bed dressing techniques, we realize that bed dressing techniques help us to actually easily manage and, and restore and sustain our soil nutrients every day, every time. And also it helps you to protect sometimes the washing away of the nutrients. If you do it rightly, you need to know how to do it rightly I will teach us here how to do the complementary uh, farming in our third class, where we're going to see deeply how this system works well to protect your garden. You need to learn how to raise your beds so that in the process, you'll be able to easily spread the compost and mulch and retain the moisture and nutrients. Uh, Another principle or technique or operation of dressing is tilling or trailing, supporting your plants, pruning them out and maintaining them in right position, removing the dried parts or organic or parts, organic matter, and then making sure that the underground soil, uh, the, the top soil is covered with dead debris. We must know also weed clearing as one of the top dress, uh, one of the dressing mechanisms that 
is referred to in Genesis chapter two. So those are principles that uh, we need to know so that uh, when we are Well, so uh, we are looking at these dressing techniques that are going to help us to make sure that our gardens are productive. And to look into this, we shall come uh, deep, we shall touch them deeply in our third class where we are going to look at those principles. to do exactly mentioning the exact items and how they need to be applied in, in our gardens. Because of sin, many things have changed and the condition of, uh, of, 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 of things the way God wanted them to be has really changed. So in Genesis chapter four, verses 12, the earth could not produce as its strength the fertility of the soil reduced after Cain had killed his brother. So the, the curse was that when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee a strength. So the strength that it had at the beginning had been reduced, but still when man had the knowledge and being obedient to the rules and regulation that God put in the beginning, it was going to continue. After the flood in Genesis chapter eight, verses 22 says, while the earth remains seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So what we need to understand here is that uh, God made sure that there was seed time. And so what should we, what part should we play we must know the seed selection techniques, seed preservation techniques, and uh, the, the cold and the heat, summer and winter should teach us to know time to plant and how to plant, what to plant, uh, which season work best with specific fruits or vegetables or cereals, or which harvesting techniques we are supposed to, to apply which food preservation techniques are we to, uh, to, to actually apply? Because many people are complaining that they harvest and the weevils and many pests affect the food in the stores. In this class, we'll be able to learn techniques we need to apply in order to preserve and conserve our harvest. In Genesis chapter 9, verses 20, and Noah began to be an husbandman and he planted a vineyard. We see Noah after the flood begin to do that which was there before at the beginning. He began to be an husbandman to rear and till the soil. Now, we want to look at agriculture in biblical times, some of the simple techniques here. In, Genesis chapter two, verses 15 or four, verses two, three and 12, we find that tilling the ground was one of the most important occupation and rearing cattle were the main occupation done during the ancient time. The Egyptians excelled in agriculture. After the Israelites gained possession of the promised land, their circumstances were ideal for a remarkable development of this art agriculture became the basis of the mosaic commonwealth. Remember they were promised the pleasant land, that is the land of Canaan. And if you read about that pleasant land, you just go 
uh, you go do your simple study on it, you'll find very interesting factors about it, how it was a well-watered garden, a well-watered place with a lot of fruit trees, with a lot of plants, vegetation that will feed the whole nation. So the Israelites or the, uh, or the Jewish system of farming was one of the models that we need to copy and see how they use it and how we need to initiate it uh, in order to be successful. The six months from the middle of Tisri, that is September or to October, to the middle of Nisan, March and April, were occupied with the work of cultivation and the rest of the year mainly with the gathering in of the fruits. So they had six months of gardening and six months of gathering of the fruit. The extensive and easily arranged system of irrigation from the hills, from the rills and streams, from the mountains made the soil in every part of Israel richly productive. We can get that in those verses mentioned and careful cultivation and application of manure increased its fertility to such an extent that in the days of Solomon, when there was an abundant population of about, uh, abundant population, we find that they applied about 20,000 tons of wheat year by year, which went to Hiram in exchange of Tiba. You can check that in Kings chapter five, first Kings chapter five, verses 11. So, the model of farming then used to produce a lot of food. In fact, much that even overweight the eaters or those who are feeding on it. Why has the system changed today? That is what we need to ask ourselves. Uh, wheat was also sent in large quantities to the Ty uh, Tyrians for the merchandise in which they traded in Ezekiel 27, 17. They would sometimes produce 100 fold and figs and pomegranate were very plentiful and grapes and olives grew luxuriantly and produce abundant fruit. So the, the, the pattern of their farming or gardening uh, principles made them to produce 100 fold, 30 fold, 20 fold. Remember the time of uh, Isaac, uh, Isaac, uh, when the ground, that is Genesis chapter 26, produced a hundredfold. Because of following, being obedient to God and following the principle that God had given in the beginning. So some of the cultural practices in the Jewish culture or during the time of Israelites were the gleaning, you could find they could harvest, and the ones that were at the side stages of the farm were not clean uh, or were not removed, but uh, uh, the, the owners could not glean, but the, those who were poor could glean to, pro, to get something to eat, which we don't find today because of covetousness and every man for himself. So selfishness had made that system not to work in our system. The only way it can work again is for us going back and establishing everything the way it needed to be. The soil had to be having its Sabbaths, that is resting. It need to rest after three years or after seven years in the sabbatical here, the soil needed to be laid fallow for some times. And I tell you, if we do that today, our soil will be able to regenerate and develop itself so that it be able to produce abundantly. That product, production, productions have, in, have reduced today because of over tillage or over cultivation. So if you set a farm, make sure that you first set the ecosystem right. Make sure that everything, your, your land is protected because nowadays we have neighbors who are producing uh, using the chemical compounds. What should you do in order to protect your farm amidst the people who are spraying chemicals? I will tell you what to do. 
in our third class, not now. Uh, the agricultural products, well, all these in the grains, in the vegetables have veg and legumes and spices, all these were being produced during that time. And it used to be supplied in almost every part of the world, known world then, where people would trade. Fruits and nuts were being produced in abundance and people who would trade the Ishmaelites could go to Egypt to trade on that. And, and also they could share that which they were not having with other nations. What were the rules of operation during that time? There was year of rest. So lest the productiveness of the soil be exhausted, it was decided that the whole land should rest every seventh year when all agricultural labor will entirely cease. So our lands are not resting today. We may say because of overpopulation, but I tell you, it is not that. It is because of our covetousness. If you set a farm, uh, I want to advise you to set them into divisions or in um, uh, make sure that you subdivide them so that you able to work some part of it, some part of your farm or garden in some parts of the year and some part of the year, the other parts will be resting to redevelop the ecosystem and make sure that your soil is strengthened again. It was forbidden to sow a field with diverse seeds and this is so, uh, so deep spiritually, uh, telling us about Christ was coming, was not supposed to mingle with, uh, with the seed of or the mind of Satan, but it had to be a pure mind, a pure seed. Uh, and also we can bring it in agriculture in that if we sow our plants with diverse seeds or seeds that are not of the same family or same species, uh, you will reduce the you will reduce the productive power and also the progression progression process ability of that plant to purely produce the right seed all the time. So only seeds that of or seeds that are uh, seeds that are not of the same family that cannot cross pollinate are to be put together. But the ones that are of the same family, like the grass family, maize, or or maybe wheat, oats, they need to be planted separately. But maize and beans, they are of different genera or not general, different species. And so the, 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 the production of another cannot affect the other in the cross-pollination uh, cross process. Another thing that was done was that a passerby was at liberty to eat an, any quantity of corn or grapes, but it was not permitted to carry away any. Today, that cannot happen because the production has reduced there was to be tree preservation. They were not to cut trees. Today, people have done a lot of devastation on the, on the forest. And so that ecosystem cannot work. Why was God advising them not to cut trees, more so fruit trees? Because fruit trees was going to provide food for them. Another thing, fruit trees are the best, uh, are the best uh, trees to make compost from. If you want to make the right compost, get them from the leaves of the, of the fruit trees. And also they, be, they are able to preserve the soil because their rooting system do not deprive the soil of its nutrients, but regenerate and develop it. Wow, that is so interesting. And these were the truths that were there most of the time. You will find if you read Isaiah chapter 43, also the trees like far cedar of Lebanon, we have the, uh, the cypress, all those plants, all those trees were to be, uh, to be preserved because they were helping in the conservation of the soil 
and also for removing any pest around and purifying the air. That is the benefit of planting cypress, cedar, fir, or pine around your farm to protect you from any harm from other farms. And God says that if they will follow that, blessings will follow them day by day. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 8, Therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land, whether you go to possess it, and that you may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear upon your fathers to give unto them and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land whither thou goest uh, into the process, it is not the land of Egypt from whence you came out, where thou sowest thy seed and waterest it by thy food as a garden of herbs. But the land whither you go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh uh, water of the rain of heaven. So the, the, the land was flowing with milk and honey. This is not literal milk and honey, but it was full of fruits and full, uh, full of grains like, uh, like wheat, rye, oats, barley. It was a land that was so productive because of its placement, its location. It was abundant in fruit trees, abundance of nature, and that system was, food, uh, was, was, was not disturbed. And that's why there was a lot of production in that area. A land with the, uh, which the Lord thy God careth for. I want to promise you and tell you that if we set our gardens and follow the commandments of God, then the Lord will care for our land. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. I want to tell you today for you to succeed. We are in an evil world where even the environment is, the atmosphere is being sprayed. The only safety is to dedicate your farm in the presence, in the hands of the Lord. Do you pray for your farm? Before holding any seed and planting it in your garden, do you pray for it? Do you consecrate it? Do you put the Lord in all that you do in your garden? Because if we follow the principles right and put our heart to God, God will be able to make sure that he retains all that we put and we produce a lot that will be helpful for us. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Another principle you need to learn as an Advent farmer is to make sure that you love the Lord diligently. Today, people want to serve the Lord partly. Even with the production of the farm, many do not produce, give tithe and offerings. And as a result, there is a lot of devastation in our farms. It is because we have not given that which is right to the Lord that I will give you the rain of your land in its due season, and I will send the grass in thy field for thy cattle. Take heed to yourself that your heart be not deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. One of the things that has made the world to be the way it is, where our farming systems are failing, it is because our hearts are not given to God. We are not doing things rightly according to the word of God. Another thing, worshiping of false gods, maybe the Trinity God, or maybe the God of the flesh, the God of the eyes, the God of the pride of this life has made us in such a way that we are so covetous that we don't do that God wants us to do. And so, the curse will not be in us. Our store uh, are not blessed. We have worms and 
a lot of pace disturbing us because we are not walking in the ways of the Lord. For these principles to work, we must go back and walk in the way of the Lord. And all these curses that we see today, cash shall be thy basket and store, will not apply. And our production will be so much that we cannot even find a place to store. There's a lot of his lack of a lot of problems here that we find today. For the locust consumes our farms. Uh, we find that uh, we carry much seed out into the field, but we get in little. The worms eat the, the plants, and also the fruits cast out their fruits. Like you see, mangoes today do not work, do not produce. I will tell us in our fourth, the last class on how to do, to deal with the plants in order to have good fruiting and also to make sure that your fruits are not falling anyhow. And the worst scenario is that the palmy worm, that which the palmy worm has left are the locust eaten, and that which the locust has left are the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm has left are the caterpillar eaten. This refers to the total destruction of our farm system. Of course, this verse is speaking about how the Israelites who were first went to captivity through the Egyptians and then the Assyrians and then the Babylonian, ba Babylonians. So the Egyptians are, are linked with palm, palma worm, the Assyrians linked with the locust, then the canker worm is linked uh, the caterpillar is linked to the Babylonian system. But I want to just teach us that the world is in a confused state, that the farming system are being destroyed by worms. We fear worms. We fear pests. And so chemicals have been produced that make sure that all these worms are destroyed. And as we spray all these chemicals, what it does, it affects the ecosystem. It kills all the beneficial nutrients, all the beneficial microbiome. And so we end up having a dead story. So I want to end here uh, that what will really help us, it is us going back to the whole techniques. We have to go back to the whole techniques we have to go back to the right principles and right model, uh, right model of farming. And you will never regret. If you learn how to make sure that your farm is first protected by how you lay it out, you are in the path to success. If you learn how to put the right seeds in place, you must know the right seeds to plant. If you have fake seeds or seeds that are not in the right manner or proper manner, or the right ones, you will still suffer the problem we have today. So we, there are a lot of things we need to learn, but this class was just to mention the nitty gritties, the basis, the foundation of farming that was there in the beginning that worked, that we, if we apply them, we shall be able to succeed. I want to end with this thing, page 6.5. It says again and again, the Lord has, has instructed families to go, uh, to move away from cities into rural districts where they can grow their foods for the problem of buying and selling will be the most difficult one. The reason why we are here is to make us be so educated to know how we are going to set farms in a right way so that we can be able to shield the diverse problems that we have today. So may God bless us as we look forward to the subsequent uh, classes where we'll be going into details on how we are able to restructure our gardening principles and 
know what to do. Tomorrow, I will be going deep into how the right methods were changed. And that has brought us to where we are today, suffering. But still, God's people can do it better. We can still destabilize the system and be and, and find uh, production right. I want us to pray to end. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for all that you've learned today. We pray that you continue to be with us even tomorrow and subsequent days. Teach us and make us uh, able to apply all that we have learned. Let your blessings be upon us. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen.